Welcome again. In this video I'm going to talk about the new updates of the Tensile Testing Machine, especially about the new crosshead and the new grip. And uh, there will be some further updates which I will um, do. So I want to talk about these things. So firstly, I have new crossheads now, uh, almost the same design as uh, previously. So we have the nuts for the lead screws and uh, there is a hole in the in the middle of this uh, plate. There are three 5mm thick plates on each side. On this side uh, I have the grip and uh, there is a nut, nut on, the, on the other side of the crosshead. So the grip is fixed to the crosshead by a nut. And here, instead of using a nut, there is a force sensor or load cell which is capable of measuring 500 kilograms or 5 kilonewton uh, force. So finally I'm able to measure force uh, during the testing. And uh, once these grips are perfectly aligned, then I will be able to put the sample here. If you can see, this is a simple specimen. It's a very small, so basically this length, the gauge length is just 5 millimeters and uh, the wall length is roughly 3 centimeters, around 3 centimeters. So once I fix the sample, uh, I will use pins for the outer uh, two holes, so this and this, and in the middle hole there will be a thread and uh, the sample will be clamped to the to the grip by a small piece of uh, metal plate. So basically the same uh, surface area as this grips uh, surface area. So this is about the grips, the load cell and uh, the cross heads. And uh, there will be one more part uh, which will be replaced because previously I have noticed that there is a big problem with it. So I have these bearings uh, on this side. These are just simple pillow bearings which are designed to withstand uh, radial forces only and not actual forces. So when there is a high torque required to rotate the, uh, the gears instead of uh, standing still, these uh, pillow bearings started to bend in that direction, in, in this direction which I'm uh, pointing at. And uh, this is not good at all because uh, instead of rotating uh, there is just a, a jumping uh, of, the, of the wheels and that's of course not good and we would like to avoid it. So need a, we, we, we need a very solid setup and for that solid setup I have a very solid support bearing, 8mm diameter, uh, so the same diameter as the previous uh, bearings but this can withstand uh, the actual forces. So I have a threaded rod here now. This will be uh, supported by the bearings. There will be two bearings, one here, one at the other end. And then there will be a locking nut at the end of this uh, uh, threaded rod. And I will attach the two uh, worm gears uh, on the corresponding places, like I attached it to this shaft. And then, uh, yeah, it will be here and it will be driven either directly with the motor uh, or I will use the old uh, setup. So I have this uh, timing pulley on this and uh, there will be another timing pulley on the motor and I will use this uh, belt so I can drive the, I can drive the axis uh, or shaft for the worm gears and they can uh, drive the two lead screws and then as I rotate it then they will approach each other so I can do compression test or they will uh, the grips will separate so I can do uniaxial tensile test so I talked about the cross heads I talked about the grips and the uh, load cell I showed you the new bearings. I, actually, I have uh, three of this, but uh, I will use either one, only replacing this one, because if I can hold it here, then maybe I don't need another support here. And uh, 
I will replace this frame with the four uh, profiles and with this thin sheet. The wall thing will be like something 30 by 30 centimeters. So the frame will be replaced and uh, this plate will be replaced with, uh, by a single piece of uh, aluminium plate. I think the thickness will be around one, one and a half uh, centimeter, maybe two centimeters. It depends on the price and it depends on the requirements, so how solid uh, setup I need. Or ultimately I will use uh, a plate made of uh, steel. Uh, I will see it, but this uh, setup is not rigid enough for the final uh, machine. So when I build the final setup of the machine, I will need something which can uh, hold the bearings and hold the, hold everything basically very uh, firmly. So this is about the, the structure and uh, there are some other updates. So previously I was using this uh, stepper motor. This is a NEMA 17 uh, stepper motor with a 1 to 100 uh, gear ratio and uh, the shaft is uh, 8 millimeters in diameter, uh, four wires, so it's very simple to drive it. But uh, maybe this is not the best option to drive this wall system. So instead of using this uh, stepper motor, maybe I will use something like this. This is a DC motor, 12 volts. The RPM uh, at the end of the planetary gear is uh, 11.5. So I don't exactly remember the gear ratio, but something maybe the gear ratio is here uh, 515. Uh, and uh, another advantage of this uh, thing is that there's a magnetic sensor here, a hole sensor, so I can control the motor. Uh, by PVM signal and I can also read the uh, actual speed of the motor by reading the signal of this whole, whole sensor. So I can use this as well or I can uh, do some trick and uh, use a bigger uh, motor like this. This is a NEMA 23. Uh, this is without any transmission or uh, gear setup but uh, I have already searched for some setups and probably I will use even bigger with a longer body uh, even bigger motor with a longer body and with a 1 to 4 or 1 to 15 uh, gear ratio so probably yeah I will use this because this is very uh, strong so I can squeeze out quite high torque and uh, I will see what I need, but I will uh, redesign the, the shaft here, so probably I will have stronger bearings, thanks to this uh, guy here, and uh, I will have a better alignment for the gears, and uh, I will have a solid plate for the wall equipment, so everything will be kept in place firmly so these won't move like they move now it's a bit yeah crappy and uh, also yeah I will use the data from the load cell I already have the circuit so I just have to connect these wires and read the signal by an Arduino and uh, I will see but uh, in the coming weeks I will work on this and hopefully I can assemble a new new machine or at least I can replace some parts such as the bearings and uh, I can do some measurement and hopefully break this steel specimen. It will need like 3000, 3500 uh, newtons to break so it will be close to the limit of this machine but hopefully I can I can do it. So that's all for now and we see each other in the next video where I can show you some tests.